Hey, my name is Jack. I'm 14 years old, and I'm going to be talking about Genesis 25, 19 to 28. Ouch! Jack, that wasn't very nice. Uh, hi, I'm Reuben Dixon. I'm also doing this video covering uh, Genesis 25. We're covering the story of Jacob and Esau. Back over to you, Jack. Ow! Okay, so the past couple days we've been talking about Abraham. And, as you know, Abraham has had a son named Isaac. Now, this starts off when um, Isaac is about 40 years old, and he marries uh, someone named Rebecca. Um, so, they were having trouble getting pregnant. Um, and uh, Isaac had talked to God, and they uh, blessed him with a pregnancy. So, uh, that's kind of like Abraham's story, where he, uh, they couldn't have kids either. But now it's the same thing as Isaac. So, uh, Rebecca was having real trouble uh, during the pregnancy, seeing as she was always in pain and uh, something was always wrong. Um, so she prayed to God, and she said, and He said, "There are two nations fighting inside your womb. So there is two babies fighting real hard inside of her stomach." And He said, "The older one will." Uh, become uh, the servant of the younger one. Uh, when it came time to give birth, uh, uh, she she gave birth to two twin boys. Um, the first one, it said, uh, the first one came out red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. Um, so they named him Esau. So Esau means hairy. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, uh, was named Jacob, obviously, uh, because he was, <laughs> because he was, uh, grabbing onto Esau's heel as he came out of the, um, womb. Um, so Jacob means holding onto the heel, or a deceptive one, or cheater. And later in the story, you'll see that he, uh, lives up to that name. And as he became older, uh, Esau became a very skillful hunter, and Jacob was more quiet. And so uh, Isaac loved Esau because he was such a skilled hunter and he was strong. But Rebecca always loved Jacob more. Reuben, your turn. Ow! Stop it. Alrighty. Um my part of the story, we start with um, Esau out in the field, and Jacob's inside, and he's cooking some red stew. So, Esau comes in from the field, and he's like, um, I'm exhausted, let me eat some of your stew. He's really hungry. Um, so, two things I want to highlight right here is really important, is, one, Esau is showing instant gratification. He wants the stew right now, and he, like, doesn't want to work for anything, and he wants it right now so much that he's willing to sell his birthright for it, which is kind of the point of the story. The second thing I want to highlight is, um, like, his name was changed from this. It says in the passage that his name was changed from Esau to Edom, which is a close-sounding Hebrew word to uh, the sound red, which kind of is, like, mocking the fact that he wanted the red stew. So, um, from this moment on, it's kind of, like, marking this story as an important part of his life that he sold the birthright to his brother Jacob. Um, so, back to the story, Jacob told him that to give him the stew, he's going to have to sell him the birthright. And so Esau's like, I'm going to die of like hunger. What, what point is the birthright to me if I'm dead? So then Jacob persists and he's like, swear to me that you were going to sell me the birthright. And um, Esau, with the instant gratification, he doesn't care right now about anything. He just wants that red stew. He swore off the birthright and pretty much bam, just like that, it um, makes Jacob have the birthright. So, the birthright is more important than just getting, like, the bigger share of your father's estate. The birthright is also handing over the authority of the father when your father dies. So, that makes you pretty much the head of the household, gives you the final say on everything, and pretty much puts you in charge over everything, fulfilling God's prophecy when he said that the younger shall rule over the older. This makes Jacob have authority over top of Esau. So, two things I want to take away from this 
is I'm coming back to the instant gratification. Um, when you want something and you want it now, you're not working for it. It's not a good thing. It never works out and it doesn't go your way. The second thing is that even though Jacob messed up in this moment, he cheated J he cheated Esau out of the birthright. And later on in his story, he even wrestles with God. So, like, both things aren't very good and he cheated and he messed up. Even though he did that, God still used him to create a huge nation. And through Jacob's family, God actually blessed the whole world. So if you follow um, Jacob's line down um, through all the lineage, you actually find that Jesus is related to him. It just shows that um, no matter how much you mess up, God can still use you and use your life for his purposes. Alrighty, let's pray. Uh, dear God, thank you for today. Um, thank you that we get to do these videos together and um, spend time in your word together. Um, I just pray for all the stuff that's happening in the United States right now um, with the man getting killed by this police officer and uh, that justice would be served during them, to them. Um, yeah, and I just pray that everyone keeps safe during this time and that we'd be able to get together soon. You may pray. Amen. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you. Uh, for the wonderful weather we've been having out here. Uh, I pray that this could continue out through the summer so we actually have um, some good uh, places to go and hang out and we can just play with our families and um, you know we can enjoy your time in good nature. Um, I pray also for the virus that's happening right now. I pray for the people affected that um, we can get our numbers closer down to zero so we can finally get rid of this and we can all go back to um, you know, our churches, and we can go back to hanging out with our friends like we want to during the summer. Um, I pray again um, that everyone can just stay safe during this and that we can have patience with the people we're living with because I know that living with the same people for two months straight, feeling trapped in our own homes, really sucks. Uh, I pray that everyone can learn something from this story, um, and I pray that um, as we go through this next series, um, the series of Epic, that everyone can just pick up on the major themes of um, your word through um, the beginnings of the Bible. They can show so much and they set up the plot for the second half of your Bible. Um, I thank you again for today. In your name, amen. See ya, Jack. Ow, would you quit that? See ya, everybody.